Hello everyone, thanks for being here. My name is Zhang Han from Nanjing University. Today I'm going to show you an Evil Devil approach for performance-based design optimization combining facade design with building method, which can facilitate early stage architectural design exploration. First come to the question of why I did this research. One of the problems lies in performance-based architectural design optimization is the separation of building method design and facade design. That weakens the synergy energy for more progressive performance improvement. So there are three challenges as below. First, how to synergize building method and facade design. Second, how to incorporate multi-scheme facade exploration so as to get closer to real-world design practice. In response to the challenges mentioned above, this paper presents a workflow using an Evil Devil approach. This approach consists of three steps. First, is a generative algorithm keeps creating building methods with high geometrical variability. Secondly, a simulation is conducted to calculate a performance-related attribute of the generated building method. The final step, the facade development, is the innovation of this method. Specific facade patterns are generated based on the building method's surface and controlled by the calculated result. From the perspective of Evil Devil. This step can be viewed as the building method grows itself an adaptive scheme in response to its surrounding environment. Next, the final design with facade pattern is included into an optimization process and produces high performing design variants as a result. This animation shows how the procedure works. This is the first round and the second round. And finally, we get a high performance on design variants as a result. For demonstrating the efficacy of the proposed workflow, we take a case study. The target building is a seven-story building located in Wuhan, China, with a hot summer and cold winter climate. First is a methane generation. Second is a simulation calculating the solar irradiation. Then comes the facade development based on three commonly seen facade design schemes, including a grill pattern, a sunshade pattern, and a fenestration pattern. Each pattern's generative algorithm remaps the solar irradiation intensity to a corresponding facade attribute, density, depth, and the numeric variation. With this attribute, an adaptive scheme is grown from the generative building mass in response to the facade's thermal condition. Those design results are sent to three optimization processes respectively. In this case study, the five highest ranking design variants, we call them elites, from three optimization processes, S1, S2, and S3, with different facade schemes are retrieved. This figure summarizes the elites and their performance indicators, and this table provides the average of each indicator of the elites from S1, S2, and S3. The results of the case study demonstrate that with different facade schemes, the highest ranking building design shows different characteristics both in the building form and the performance. Like in S1, the Alice shows east west strip shape with a small depth, S2 with shelf shading, shading with a greater depth, and the scattered and separated massing. And for performance, we can see the compromises between the daylighting and solar irradiation when using different facade schemes. So we can see the cooperation between the building massing and facade schemes. 
It raises a question of how the building design responds to the environment without these adaptive building schemes, and whether the facade integrated design process has an advantage over the non-integrated ones. In light of this, a comparison study is conducted to test out whether the integration of the facade development would make a difference. An optimization process C0 is carried out without any self-adjusted facade schemes to be the control groups. We get five alleys, and here is the average integrator for fitness, state lighting, and solar irradiation. Next, we generate three facade schemes on them so that we get 15 results, which serves as an example of the conventional facade separated design process. We mark them C1, 2, 3 to present three groups of the results with schemes 1 to 3 respectively. Here is the average indicator. Then is the results from S1 to 3 present the facade integration design processes so that we can see that they generally outperform those non-integrated ones, which further proves the efficacy of the proposed generation workflow. Lastly, I'd like to leave the relative research to give a summary. Over the last decade, researchers have made valuable studies in this field. However, most of the research didn't take the integration of facade into consideration, as Jensen's study in 2011, thus hindering the synergistic effect. The other research which did combine facade can be generally concluded into three kinds. First has two linear design process with single facade schemes. Second, has unordered form like this, which is far away from real-world design practice. Third, use rooms as an analysis unit, ignoring building mapping as a whole. So the strengths of the proposed workflow can be as follows. First, synergizing the strengths of building mapping and facade design. Second, Encouraging architects to apply design optimization exploration to the early stage design so as to incorporate multi-scheme facade exploration and to get closer to the real-world design scenarios. Thirdly, making architecture become a more responsive and adaptive agent in shaping our future built environment. So that's all. Thanks for your time.